Oh, what's up, everybody? So, I forgot to record an introduction. So, here it is. My name is Russ uh, with rwgresearch.com. Uh, okay, let me show you this little clip to bring back a memory, and then I'm going to continue. So, let me show you the setup. I've got the vacuum in here. Um, it is just sticking out of the back, so I got a lot of airflow coming out. I just have it covered up because it's so freaking loud. It's about twice as loud as the cutter. Now I've got the back coming up here. I got those holes. Well, I had those holes covered up. Maybe that's why it wasn't working very well. So I just got one or two open. I got the back coming up here, and then everything going down into the holder. And as you know, the spindle is on there with the uh, vacuum thing. Well, as you can tell, it's a uh... Not going to work for a normal type of normal atmosphere of using this thing all the time. So, I ran across this portable vacuum thing, and I've already just, like, taken it all apart, and I'm started working on it, and then I started recording this video. So, that's what this video is actually about. A portable-ish vacuum cleaner thing that's going to fit on the OSD and actually work really well. So, here we go. Oh my goodness. Alright, so a quick update had this uh, bristle thing that I've taken apart. I'm not going to pull it out of there. There's the head. It's a bristle unit. Here's the arm. It was a base. Here's the uh, other pieces. And the bottom has, I guess, a motor in it to spin the brushes. And that motor is connected through some pins on the other part, which I have in the other room. So I took this thing all apart. I'm going to rewire the whole thing so I can externally power it or charge it. So, let me show you. Alright, so here's the other half. And when I took this apart in the back, there was a spot for a plug, but it just had this in it. And in that big base, it had the original port for the plug. Now, this is just a blank cap where this charger port goes. So, look about right. And indeed, they do actually fit in here, so... Ta-da! So I can use the plug from the original thing that I'm throwing it away uh, to fit in here. They always use interchangeable parts if they can, right? That way they can buy the same parts. Anyway, so the bottom had the charger. That's where this plug goes to. And it goes into the charge board here. Um, so the other two pins, so two of the pins are, are for power. The other two pins actually go out to the uh, motor. One goes to the switch on top, and one goes to the motor. So that's these two outer pins. So I've, I've cut those off the circuit board, just removed them completely. One goes to switch, <laughs> one goes to M positive. <laughs> Bless you. Thank you. So I'm going to repurpose those pins to actually go straight to the battery. So I don't know if you can run this by applying power through this jack. As you can see, these small wires on here and the big wires on the battery. I don't think you can. So I'm going to connect the wires up to the out two pins, outside two pins. I might even be able to use this adapter plate. And I can just set this on wherever I want and external it pow uh, power it externally. Or I could solder some wires onto the bottom of that with a jumper lead. Either way, everything will be external once I hook up all these wires in the right spot. Let me get that done. I'll show you. All right. So the idea here is to externally be able to power this guy. So I took the already through pins here and put one to the battery positive, one to the battery negative here. Uh, and then just hooked up the where there used to be a blank plug so now I can charge it with the supplied cord because there are internal batteries. So I do plan on using this for other things and then when I want to use it for the printer I can. So I wanted that functionality. So here's what the uh, here's what the uh, impeller looks like. Looks very much like a regular shop vac style if you've ever taken those apart. So it's just got uh, flutes at an angle inside here. I guess those are considered flutes. And uh, yeah, suck out the front, blow out the back. So let's put this back together. But just kind of wanted to show you what I did because I don't know I was doing it. Well, there you go. So, we removed that blank plug. We used the original adapter, took it out of the uh, old parts. And uh, now we have a plug right in the back where the different version of this probably already has, but I don't have that version. Uh, so, 
plug this in. Okay, and then our indicator light shows that it's charging and we can't turn it on while it's charging. So if we unplug it, then we can turn it on. However, I now have access to the battery positive and negative and then also those other two pins are still just the charge positive and negative. So as long as this thing is just over 12 volts and I put 12 volts into it, uh, we won't really overcharge the batteries. We shouldn't have to worry about that. Little concern, but not much. But anyway, there you go. Now I've got a portable slash vac for the OSD. In case you're wondering why I took this apart and threw it away, it's because there is so much nasty stuff in this thing that cleaning it out would be very difficult, so it was tossed out from being completely disgusting, and it was. It was very disgusting, but I cleaned it out. Alright, in case you're wondering, the batteries are sitting at almost dead right now. They appear to be around 12.3 volts, so... Feeding this with 12 volts um, shouldn't hurt anything as long as you're making sure your supply is actually 12 volts. Some supplies say 12 volt, they're actually like 13.5 or something because they're designed for a charger that has to be above the battery voltage. Uh, anyway, the other option here would be to put in some external plug and a simple switch um, and then being able to turn on and off the basically just override the electronics altogether. It looks like the motor controller actually has some some smartness to it. I don't know if it varies the speed or what. So I don't know if you could hear that but it it started out slow and then it finally got to its top end. Anyway, so I'm gonna plug this in and let it charge but yeah, it should work fine. Oh and by the way when I got this you couldn't even see into there. It was completely covered with wet cat leftovers. Should be okay now though. Well, it's a new day and I changed my mind. I decided to go ahead and put a connector in here. And instead of putting a switch of some kind, I decided to add a relay. And this relay basically selects the automatic switching according to if it's plugged in externally. So let me show you exactly how that works. Here is the schematic. It's very straightforward. You just have the coil relay and the common normally open, normally closed. So the power supply here connects across the coil and goes to ground and then also connects to the normally open. The normal battery is connected to the normally closed, which goes to the circuit board positive. Grounds are all tied together. So when you plug in power here, it activates this limit switch and flitch, switches this to normally closed, which is connected back to the power supply. And that goes to the circuit board. Easy! So uh, I just took my knife actually and notched this out. Uh, once I get it together, I'll show you what it looks like. But um, for instance, right now we're reading the battery voltage. And I have this connected to the power supply. So when I connect this uh, to the power supply voltage, you'll hear it click, and you'll hear it change, or you'll see it change voltage. So here we go. So that's power supply voltage, and that's battery voltage. So it switches fast enough that the battery never really makes it. Um, well, it can't make it anywhere, can it? Yeah, the way it was originally going to do it may have done that, but this way it doesn't even. So you can't actually even connect the battery to the output according to where, what I've got here. So this does work just fine. Um, and I'm going to put it together so I can show you what it looks like. Well, I will say that that was difficult. But I managed to get all the wires in there without pinching any. And it works just fine. So here's what it looks like. Nice uh, connector on there. I decided to not to try to fit it in the middle and just easier to cut out one side. But it fits in there really nice. As if it was supposed to be there. It actually fit here nicely, but I wouldn't have been able to put the wires in there very well. 
and that just wouldn't have worked very well but it does actually fit in there nicely so anyway now we can we can continue now we can plug it in or I can use it for an everyday actual normal use but uh, yeah next please well you got something to look forward to here's a little snippet talk to you later and don't forget to leave a comment let me know what your thoughts are good bad and the ugly I like them all yeah as long as nothing goes wrong we're cutting our first printed circuit board with the fully uh, whatever you call it ready to go vacuum cleaner CNC so I'm cutting a spiral this is what it looks like right now and I'll show you what it looks like in a little while the goal is that it looks like this when we're done so we'll see <laughs> 